So I was just checking up on my plants and I noticed that our Saracenias are starting to grow. You guys may see their new growth here. And um, this is going to be their growth for the next couple of months until it becomes too hot in summer and they die out. The problem of Australia. But I realized I haven't really talked to you guys about looking after your Saracenias while pruning and cleaning them up before spring. You have to prepare your Saracenias um, for springtime. You don't have to, but it is good to do so because it uh, is actually quite healthy for the plant. You basically trim off all the pitches, most of them at least, and this allows there to get more air and more light to the crown of the plant. And that is very beneficial, especially for these new developing pitches like that. So in this video, I'm going to show you the steps, gonna go through it, show you some problems we're having with our plants and how cleaning them up, cutting off all the old pitches, actually will help to mitigate and prevent these problems that we currently do have with the, these plants. Um, gonna go through those steps and I'm gonna show you and teach you guys and do it together. And hopefully you guys learn something from this. So let me turn on the camera and I'll quickly show you guys our situation that we have. So as you guys can see over here, we have some new growth coming out of the plant. And it's more so seen by the rhizome here, sitting on all these new pitches. They're quite sharp actually, they're like, if you stab someone with that, you'd actually get hurt. But at the same time, we have all these, you know, dead and dying leaves, which are serving very little purpose at this time. And what ends up happening is that no light and air can get to the center of the plant, so you can develop pests so we have spider mites you guys can hopefully see down there it's like little spider webs they may not be spider mites just normal spiders but by opening up the plant it prevents these diseases and pests from being able to live here and grow here and like i said removing all this foliage around here gives more light to the developing pitches which is obviously perfect and what we need for the plants and you may be able to tell we also have like mold and fungus growing over here. This is a problem that comes by having too many minerals and nutrients in your water. I use tap water. That's why this happens. I can't collect rainwater. Um, so this is obviously not good for the plants at all. So if you're getting this, you're getting mineral buildup. You need to get cleaner water. Um, but yeah, I can't change my situation, but you hopefully can. So yeah, also having more air will allow this to grow slower. It prevents the mold from really growing and building up and whatnot. But anyway, let's get into it. So yeah, I might need to readjust this camera once again. So yeah, guys, please excuse the weird angle. I'm sitting on a step outside. It's the only place really in the house that I can record. Let me actually try to fix this camera a little bit. Okay. I don't know, that's terrible. Oh, the problems of using a phone. If you guys want to help me get a camera, please like the video. But anyway, yeah, we're going to clean up this plant. And the way that you do it, you take your little scissors. I have this little scissors that is all rusted and messed up because I'm not going to be... I don't want to buy one if I want to be leaving the country. Some of you guys may know that I want to move overseas to America, but it's not looking like it's going to happen. So I don't know where I'm going to go. But I need to go. I'm not a resident in Australia, so I have to leave. <sighs> a mission. But anyway... Let me show you this real quick. You're going to take all of your plants, um, leaves and traps that are brown at the end and like this one, half dead, half alive. If they're essentially drying off at the end and it's coming into springtime like it is now here in Australia, it's becoming spring sometime soon, I don't know when. End of winter, um, spring, basically when your plants start to grow new traps like this. Take your scissors and right at the base of one of your dead or dying um, pitches, cut it off just like that. And you do that for all of them. And then what you end up with is a plant that has essentially only growing leaves. Unless there are some pitches that are still there that are still functioning. I'll show you one as an example shortly. Like this one over here. It's still alive, it's still functioning. You don't want to cut that off because it's still eating insects, it's still useful for sunlight. 
basically these ones here that have some green in them they're still collecting sunlight for the plants but i find that when they start making new growth like this it does not affect them that much and the sunlight that comes in by removing the stuff and preventing pests is actually more beneficial for the plant than keeping a couple dead and dying leaves that the plant is kind of getting rid of anyway so yeah another thing that i think uh, is quite important to actually mention you want to ensure that you use scissors that aren't all rusty and gross and dirty like mine like i said i don't want to really buy too much stuff now i'm actually trying to sell all my stuff because like i said i'm leaving so if you do want these plants or any one of my plants really i have quite a few for sale i need a list of people who want specific plants because i can't just i can't repot 100 plants and sell one because i want to be left with 99 plants i'm going to be in a worse off position whereas if i have just one pot of plants i can give it to someone here in australia make a deal with them saying when i eventually move to the place that they send me like half and they keep the other half of the pot or whatever so yeah if you guys are interested in babysitting my plants for me and getting some free plants um, for looking after them for me do reach out for me i'm in australia and that that whole table that you guys saw earlier that is for sale too but yeah essentially i don't want to be buying much of anything at all at the moment because at the end of this year i will be leaving so like why would i want to buy more stuff if i'm leaving but that's the thing right like we live in a world <laughs> we live in a world where um you just buy stuff right and there's no real point if you have old scissors and they aren't rusted and stuff look after them i didn't look after these i left them outside and they got rusted and i thought you know what they're rusted now it's too late so i left it and it does the job i've actually never had a problem with old rusty scissors in terms of a plant getting infected like i've never ever had a plant get infected like with the virus from cutting them with old scissors but rather do the safe thing than the silly thing guys so here's just something interesting you see if i remove some leaves there's an, a normal you know tree leaf in there and that can rot away cause mold on the plant and whatnot and by cutting it open letting air get in there it blows all the stuff out prevents that from happening and that's what we're trying to do so we don't want our plants to get killed off even though when i got these plants they basically died immediately because the quality of the plants sold by basically the only distributor distribute distributor basically the only distributor here in australia i won't say their name but if you're in australia you know who they are was this is like super low quality plants guys i was extremely disappointed we lost like i'd easily say 50 percent of the plants that we bought together so yeah very disappointing guys but you know it can't be helped they're the only supplier in Australia and they don't supply much at all anyway. So, you know, beggars can't be choosers. But yeah, you guys can see we're reducing the amount of dead and dying leaves by quite a bit already. I just want to keep you guys on the camera while I remove these ones because I want you guys to see the full process. Like I said, I'm just removing them as close to the base of the plant as I can. It's going to be quite tough but here's how it looks when you remove them it's white and fleshy inside and it's like i said close to the base you don't want to go too low like into that bit there where it's like spreads into a triangle you want to be just above where it's still cylindrical if you go too low you cut cutting into more flesh and there's more chance of um infection and you know prevention is better than cure as they say so, nearly done with this one, guys. A couple more. So what you guys need to do, which I just did by mistake, try not to cut off any of the growing, developing pitches by mistake. It's going to happen to you. Like, no matter how hard you try, it happens. It happens to everyone all the time. But if you can prevent it, do 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 that i just had yeah i just had a <laughs> picture juice just mess all over me that's very gross but i want to show you guys something here that i just found on this leaf which is a very this is why we do this let me just remove this last 
couple dead and drying and you know deceased pictures and show you guys what I just discovered. This is why we remove old, dying and dead pictures because it allows pests to grow inside of them. So inside of there, that will be um, spider mites. So let's cut that off and hopefully they don't come back. Like I said, there are their little webs everywhere here, all over the little plant. So by removing, you know, an ability for them to live and grow, you are able to allow your plant to live and grow. I'm going to turn this camera around again because there's like some weird bugs or something in there and I'll show this with to you guys. So let me turn this around real quick. Okay guys, so I don't know if you guys can see that very well. It looks like a, like a bee's bum or something like that. The uh, booty of a bee. I don't know. But it kind of resembles an insect or something. So let's try to get it out. Oh, it came off. Yeah, I don't know what that is, guys. But there's also these little like pellet looking things. See these little pellet things? Yeah, I don't know what these little pellet things are, guys. But hopefully now that we've opened up, the wind will be able to blow them out, blow them all away, prevent the pests. And yeah, we have two pictures that we will be keeping, obviously because they're still alive, and two developing pictures. As you can see, this one's been damaged by something. It wasn't by me, because that's not very fresh. But yeah. Let us continue cleaning up our plants. And you can see how they develop through the rhizomes there. They branch open and they come out and they burst open full of life like this. Yep, and this is all the dead stuff behind. So let me put that one to the side and let's continue. So there, uh, these plants care coming up towards spring is really not that different from anything like any t other time of the year. You just clean out their pitchers and you start giving them and all your other cannabis plants a little bit more water as the months go on so you don't let their trays dry out for as long. This is just to mimic the start of rain in uh, spring and summer as a, like the plants would naturally get where they're native to in the US. Um, and yeah, the care is the same. Full sunlight, clean, distilled, rain, reverse osmosis water, peat and perlite soil in a plastic pot, that's all they need. And here we've got a plant that has like white mold on it or something that is definitely mold because you touch it and it just goes everywhere once again this is because of i don't want to breathe that in that's because of the water guys this is why you have to reuse the water i just mentioned or else you get sick plants even though this plant is sick it is making the the pot um misformed now saracenias do do this and they grow really big really fast See, that one hasn't come at the bottom, but this one definitely has, and they grow out to the sides, and what they do, they, they break your plastic parts. They actually do. They split it down the side, and then you have to repot them in something bigger. So they protest living in such small, confined spaces, which is fine, I guess, but if you're like me, and you're not trying to expand your collection, it makes it tough. But hey, at least the plant is doing well in the... Uh, for some reason it's doing well even though they die every time they grow because of how hot it is here in Australia. But here's another example. Let me just cut this off and show you guys. This was the leaf that we just cut off and you can see the sooty mold. You see all this black sooty mold here? That's because there is very little airflow going in the plants and it allows the mold to grow and it's pretty humid. And obviously the soil, is, I mean, the water is bad and it's just, it's a really terrible environment for these plants and I don't know how they're still alive, but they are. And you guys may see here, we have some crown rot. You see the center of the plant is all going black because of that mold. 
it's all going all going dead looks like there's some mealy bugs in there some spider mites we got it all going on here guys so like i said cleaning them up it is a prevention but when it happens you have to use a pesticide which uh, essentially i would need to do for these plants so i'll have to see what pesticides i have and if you guys want to see me do a video on the pesticides to use for these plants let me know in the description below if uh, if there's enough interest i will do a video on the pesticides that they need it's just difficult to do videos for you guys if you don't really know what you want to see right so yeah let us remove all these old infected leaves so that our plant has some chance of surviving spring and summer so there we go and there's some spider mites in here see all those little spider webs get that out so open up the crown a bit get all the old dead stuff out of the crown get all this fungus off as best you can you know i'm not trying my hardest right now but quite a few of our saracenias have been infected like this it all started when i imported well when i got those plants from that, that supplier i mentioned all the plants got sick with aphids mealybugs mold it was a very bad purchase like you lost you lose plants you lose money they all get sick so I'm not the only person that doesn't really recommend them, but here we are. This is one of their plants, again, you guys can see how thick and bushy it is. There's actually a little spider running around here. It's small, so I won't show you on the camera. But it looks like there's a mountain inside, like, and there's all, like, mold inside too. So this will be an interesting one to cut up. Let's hack through this, see what we can find. Yeah, this plant is not doing well either. Here is the, the growth point of the Saracenia. And there's the mold in there, like I mentioned, that we're uncovering. But right here, the plant was growing like you had the green bits. But it, as you can see, they kind of died off because they're sick. The plant is not happy. The plant is not, not healthy. So let's continue cutting away all of this old moldy stuff. I'm trying to not breathe in the like spores, I guess, that are that are coming off of this plant, like all of the powder that's coming off of the, the what is it, the fungus? Because that that could be potentially very dangerous for your for your lungs. And there's a bug on me, like a pull bug or something. Come on, let's get through this. Remember to just be very careful, especially with plants like this, guys. You just want to cut it all off, but there are new developing traps in there and you don't want to cut them off because if you cut off too many new developing traps, the plant will die because it has no new source of, you know, gathering sunlight and whatnot. So you have to be careful. You can't just, even though we want to, you can't just go and cut them all off. I know that there are some people, I think it's... um saracenia northwest the youtube channel the company too what they do is that they actually take like a a weed what is a weed eater and they just trim all their plants down like that and, and that when i first saw that my mind was blown because i couldn't like here we are cutting it by hand and there they just go with a weed eater and they just cut off all the old and dead traps just before spring like we're doing now so i can only imagine how many you know developing pictures they must have killed but hey it works for them it works like i'm not going to tell them to stop so let's continue getting these off so now as you guys can see we've now opened up the crown of the old plant that had died away and you can see all this mold and this disgusting rot and stuff that 
potentially would not have been there if we had opened it up sooner and prevented it by letting more air in. Like I've told you guys, I've been sick and I've been lazy with the plants. I've had a lot of stuff going on in my life. So I haven't been looking after them. And besides that, I'm kind of upset that my plants, as I grow them, they just die because of the weather here. But yeah, that's it, guys. <clears throat> so we got just two more pots to go. And these ones look very, fairly simple to do. There's no new developing traps with these. So cutting them off is very quick and easy. And you can see, like on this one, there's a mealy bug right there. But cutting off all these plants can get rid of any, I mean, these, these pictures, we get rid of all the pests that do exist currently on them. Gives the next generation of traps a better chance to grow and to do well. And just like that, we've done this one. And lastly, these are some of our own ones. We grew these guys from seed, from seeds that we brought into the country with us. And before some of you guys say it's illegal to do that, no, it's not illegal. Follow the BICON rules. That's clearly laid out on the website, Australian importation website. And you're allowed to bring in some permitted species. And Saracenia are one of them. So if you guys want to import Saracenia seeds into Australia, you definitely can. You just have to follow all the steps which are difficult to follow, but they are all outlined on the Bicon website. Um, just type in Bicon on Google and it should come up. It's not, uh, it's obviously not like displayed everywhere because they don't really want you to bring stuff into this country, but you definitely can and I did, as you guys can tell. So yeah, this one's gonna be a bit more tricky because like I said, it's all seed grown. So these pitches are all very small. So, you know, avoiding the developing small ones and cutting off other small ones is not easy to do at all, as you can imagine. So I can't talk, I can't multitask. I can't cut these things and talk. So please forgive me. In some cases, you can just pull out the old traps. If they're old enough, they do come out. But just don't pull too hard because then you will pull the plant out of the ground. And uh, you don't want to do that. See, if I pull that one there too hard, that plant will come out the ground. So just watch it. Just be careful. And there we go. That's it guys, all of our plants are now cut up and let me show you the amount of leaves we have left behind. So here are our cleaned up Saracenias, ready to start growing for the season. And here are all of the old leaves which I will be putting into the green bin to go to the, I don't know, the compost pile, I don't know what they do with the, green, the greens, but yeah. That is all you have to really do for your Saracenia. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, teaching you a little bit more about your Saracenia preparation for spring, how to look after them a little bit, and why we do it, and showing you the pests and stuff associated with them. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much else um, to show you guys. It's literally as simple as cutting off all the dead and dying leaves, from making sure that you get the pests, cleaning it out. And if you have pests like I do, applying pesticides. And if you want to see me do that, make a, I mean, make a suggestion in the comments. Let me know. But yeah, guys, I hope that you found this informative. I hope you learned something and enjoyed watching the video with me. If you did, please remember to leave a like. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you've been watching some of our videos and you want to see how these plants do in the next coming months. And yeah, if you guys have any questions for me, send me a mail on the, the comments below or email, Instagram, Facebook. Anyway, guys, I'm going to put these plants away now, clean up all the mess that we just made. So I'll see you guys next week.